Hello and welcome again. It is a joy as well as a privilege to be able to come to you and talk to you through this media resource. We pray that you are healthy and doing well. It is always our task to encourage you as we study the Word of God and briefly look at these things that are so precious to us. We want to continue to pray for one another as we deal with uh, death and COVID and all the other uh, calamities and traumas that we face from time to time. We pray again that you'll listen as we look at the Word of God. Uh, so many times we look at all of our traumatizing experiences and we forget that God has said something to all of us that we all must remember, especially at a time in life when we are dealing with sickness and death and uh, those things that sometimes make us wonder about what's going on in life. Let's look at what Peter says in Second Peter chapter 1 and verses number 4. Uh, Peter says, uh, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Peter says we ought to remember what God has given to us. These are precious promises, and I'd like to uh, talk to you briefly from that particular subject. Precious promises. Uh, we have so many great promises from God that we ought to remember them. Uh, we should enjoy knowing that these promises are going to be fulfilled by God, and we ought to not allow things to get us so where we forget about what God has said to us and we ought to always tell the world and even tell ourselves when we are down and when we are frustrated and we don't know what to do we ought to remember the promises God has made to all of us and Peter talks about those promises and let's read a little bit more of this back in verses number uh, two Peter says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as the divine power had given us all things that, that pertain to life uh, uh, and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. And he's given us these precious promises. Uh, when things get tough and when things are uncertain, remember the promises of God. Remember these precious promises when things are, or it seems as if uh, no one cares, uh, turn to God and remember the promises that he made to us. Here are some of the promises that God made to us. First, let's remember that God has promised us salvation. He's promised salvation to us. Paul puts it this way in Titus chapter 2 and verse number 11. He says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. God has brought salvation to any person that wants it. He wants us to be saved, and he has promised that he will save us. And so we ought to remember that precious promise, that promise that only God can give to us. And remember uh, in Hebrews chapter 5 and verses number 8, the Hebrew writer says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. The Bible says, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all those that love him. God has given us salvation. And we can have salvation if we want it. Saved from what? Saved from sin. Saved from the corruption of this world. All of us ought to want to be saved from the corruption and the evil and the frustrations that we have in this world. This world is not our home, as the songwriters say. We're just passing through. Our treasures are all laid up somewhere beyond the blue. We ought to remember that, first of all, God has given us the promise of salvation, and it's so precious and so great that we ought to really just strive to tell the world how good God has given us this salvation. And not only did God promise us salvation, but he promised that he would be with us 
He promised that he will not forsake us. He promised that he will always be with us. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 18 and remember Jesus when he was talking to his disciples and notice what he says in uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 18 and verses number 20, the Bible says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, he says, there I am in the midst of them. So God is going to be with you. He's going to be there where two or three are gathered together. God is there. And remember, he tells his disciples in Matthew chapter 28 as well. He says, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. He promised that he will be with us. He promised that he will comfort us and will secure us to where we will not have to think or know that we are alone. Listen to what he says in Hebrews chapter 13 in verses number five, a very uh, uh, familiar passage to most of us, but I want to turn here and read it. Hebrews chapter 13 and the verses number five, uh, he talks about uh, being aware of who we are and knowing how God is going to be with us, how he won't leave us. In, in Hebrews 13, 5, the Bible says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So again, remember uh, the precious promise of salvation. Remember the precious promise that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And then finally, notice very quickly this promise that God left us. And, uh, and I want to say this one here very clearly. He, uh, that, that he, will, he will never leave us. After he said, I'll never leave you, remember uh, the promise that the church of Christ will stand forever. Remember that. Remember that God has given us the church and it's going to stand forever. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then remember again in Hebrews chapter 12 and verses number 28, notice what the Hebrew writer says. He says, wherefore we have received a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably, acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. We have a kingdom which cannot be moved. The church is not going anywhere. God has given us this precious promise. But then let me just give you this one, just just uh, just for 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 um, as we close, right before we close, rather. The, the final thing that we ought to remember: the precious promise of the victory that we have over evil, the victory that we have over frustrations and the evil that we have in this world. Don't, don't, don't fret yourself too much about the things that's going on in this world. When things happen to us, just remember who our God is. And remember that John says it this way in 1 John 5, 4, the Bible says, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Uh, and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. We ought to remember that God has given us the victory over all evil, over sin, over death, over the frustrations that we have. Yes, we have tough times. Yes, we're going through some very challenging times, but God gives us the victory through all of it. That's why Paul was said it this way in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 58. He said, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We ought to remember that God gives us the victory uh, over all of this trauma and the frustrations and the pain that we have in this world. And we ought to see that if we stay with him and remember who he is, we can all say that these precious promises are good for all of us. We see that our time has been well spent, but remember the victory that we have. Remember the precious promises that we have in Christ. And when tough times come, remember who God is. Until the next time, may God bless you, is our prayer.